Hello, I'm Christy Nicola. I'm a software engineer with a Mass Open Cloud at Boston University. I'm also the Keystone PTL for the Victoria and Walla B cycles. This presentation is about improvements to federated identity in Keystone. We'll talk about what identity federation is, the specific, the Keystone specific implementation, approaches to authorization and limitations of each of these approaches, improvements that we have done in the past few cycles, future work that we are targeting for the next cycles. Uh, you probably are already familiar with a form of federated identity. It is present in many of the major websites or applications on your smartphone. It allows you to authenticate to various services using your credentials, using your already existing credentials from a different service. So what Identity Federation is, is the ability to share identity information across multiple identity managers, management systems. A user authenticates directly with the identity source rather than having multiple sets of credential, credentials for each of the services that they're trying to access. The most common protocols in use today are OpenID Connect and SAML. Some terminology about federated identity. An identity provider is the source of the identity information. It also authenticates and validates a user's identity. A service provider provides the requested resource that the user is requesting. Uh, it is also the consumer of the identity information coming from the identity provider. An assertion is the statement from the identity provider that contains the information about an authenticating user. This assertion contains multiple attributes, for example, for the user's full name, email address, date of birth, or other things that the uh, identity provider is releasing to the service provider. Uh, in Keystone, Federated identity is not handled directly from the Keystone service. It is handled by an Apache authentication module. This module parses the assertion coming from the identity provider and uh, uh, forwards the user to Keystone alongside uh, the different attributes that it has parsed. Uh, this is then later processed by the mapping engine which translates uh, these attributes into attributes of a user, which is then created and persisted in the Keystone database. So upon authentication, a new user is created in the Keystone database. And uh, in this example, we can see uh, a form of a mapping uh, which translate translates the remote user attribute into the name of the user. Uh, mappings allow operators to do many things. They allow, uh, they allow you to grant membership, temporarily grant membership to a group for an authenticating user. They allow you to create a project and associate a role to the authenticating user. They also can be can can also be used to restrict authentication to specific users based on a matching condition. For example, if a colleague of yours named John uh, and you don't like to you wouldn't like him to have access to your cloud, then you can restrict authentication to all users matching John. Not that I would advise that. So. Uh, this is all nice when you're using a browser. Everything is implemented. Uh, there is support. But what happens when you're trying to, uh, to access Keystone and OpenStack from, uh, from a CLI or a Python or Java or Go SDK? Uh, you cannot access a browser, so you cannot uh, use the single sign-on flows that are common among identity providers. Uh, 
there are some standards to allow you to authenticate to an identity provider through uh, either SAML, ECP, or the OpenID Connect uh, resource owner password credential grants, but they're not always enabled and you may not have control over the identity provider to enable them. So this leaves you in a pickle. Everything works great when a user uses a browser, but they cannot write applications that make full use of the OpenStack API. Uh, around the Queen cycle, we implemented uh, what are called application credentials. This works similarly to app passwords in Google. They allow you they allow a user to uh, create a secret in Keystone and then use that secret to authenticate directly to Keystone rather than uh, go again through uh, the external identity provider. Uh, permissions for this application credential can be limited to a specific API call or a specific role that a, a user has on a project and all application credentials are scoped to one project only. And uh, they are also supported in Horizon, so you can authenticate using a browser to your identity provider and inside of Horizon you can create the application credentials for usage. And uh, this is pretty good for authentication, but what about authorization? So how do you uh, specify which users have access to which projects. Uh, there are multiple ways to do this with uh, federated identity in Keystone. The first approach is to assign group membership through mappings. Uh, I will talk a little more about that. Uh, the second method is to assign roles manually to the created user. As we mentioned before, every time a user like every time a new user authenticates, a user, uh, a new user entity is created in the Keystone database and you can interact with that as if you were interacting with a normal user entity. So you can add it to groups, you can add it to projects. Uh, another thing that uh, group mappings, that uh, uh, federation mappings allow you to do is, uh, as we saw here before, uh, you can specify a project so uh, based on based on the attributes of a user you can directly create a project for them and assign the roles automatically through uh, to that project through the mappings uh, this is not something that I'm going to talk about in this presentation I'm mostly going to focus in the first two methods and for the third one I would direct you to the OpenStack uh, documentation. So authorizing via groups. So you have the situation where you have a group in the identity provider and this group is uh, uh, mapped to a group in Keystone. They may have a similar name or something like that. And this group in Keystone is then assigned uh, roles on a project. So a user is assigned the group in the identity provider and every time they authenticate into Keystone they are also assigned to the matching group in, in Keystone. And this group is what carries the role assignment for the user to access their projects. Uh, this. Uh, there are limitations to this. First, as you can see here, you need to create the groups ahead of time. So for each project, you must have a different group, and then you must assign a role to that group on that project. And uh, you need some tooling to keep this up to date so that every time a new project is created, a new group is created as well. So it's, uh, it's not trivial, and it requires some uh, uh, some tooling on the side. Uh, 
But one major limitation of this is that uh, group membership is only valid for the duration of the to a token. This is, and it's not actually persisted in the database. So if a user uh, needs to create an application credential or a trust to be able to use uh, the API or the CLI, they would not be able to because uh, they would not actually be role assignments they would just be in the token and for the duration of of this token which can be uh, 45 minutes so uh in usuri we introduced the concept of expiring group memberships so every time a user authenticates into keystone and they are uh, carrying a group which is matched and they're carrying a group from the identity provider which is matched to a group in keystone they are actually, this membership is actually persisted in the database for a limited amount of time, which is configurable on a per IDP basis. And every time the user uh, uh, authenticates and they are again assigned the same group, this, uh, this timer is refreshed. Uh, so uh, this now allows users to uh, make use of application credentials and trusts. Which was not something that uh, they could do before, and uh, was a source of headache for many uh, many users of uh, of Keystone. So uh, the other method which I mentioned was to just treat users as they are normal users. So uh, a user authenticates for the first time, and Keystone creates a representation for the user in the database. Uh, by the way, this, uh, this representation of the user we call a shadow user. And uh, then after that, you just add the groups and roles to the user. However, you can notice something here that a, a first authentication is required. So, uh, so you cannot assign a user to a project if they have not authenticated previously. So this really... Uh, this really kills the user experience, especially for new users, because now you need to go to the dashboard, authenticate, see an error because you do not have access to any project, then you have to contact your administrator and ask them to add you to, to the project which uh, you are requesting. So yes, a shadow user is only created after initial authentication and you have the burden is on you to keep the role and group membership in sync rather than delegate them to a centralized identity provider uh, to uh, to solve the problem of the initial authentication we introduced the possibility to create and modify the federated attributes of a user in keystone so now using the openstack uh, uh, api you can create a federated user before their initial authentication rather than having them authenticate first see the error and then contact you afterwards and uh, this is not only about creating but you can also update the federated user attributes you can delete the federated user attributes you can also assign multiple federated uh, user attributes to a user in keystone so this works like linked accounts So, uh, yes, so we talked about, uh, about the first two. Uh, we're also uh, investigating uh, ways that we can extend the mappings and the mapping engine to be even more powerful and to uh, not only map users to projects, but to also see ways that we can make that more dynamic and uh, more extensible. And uh, I encourage all of you to join us uh, in the OpenStack PTG for uh, discussions that we will be having about those topics. The schedule is not out yet. However, the PTG is held from the October, uh, from October 26th to the 30th. And uh, uh, the, Keyst the Keystone team will have uh, 
a meeting room either on Zoom or, or MeetPad and we will be happy to uh, receive your ideas or, and proposals and see if we can work something out together because this is an area where everyone goes and reinvents the wheel and uh, it's good to have some, some, uh, some collaboration in place and see if we can all sort it together. And uh, thank you so much.